There are, I think, three fracking sites within the boundaries of Glasgow. And if fracking goes ahead, these are going to cause a lot of uh, devastation to, uh, to uh, residential areas. Uh, can the panellists please tell me where their party stands on banning fracking? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll start on that. Well, I mean, it's, it is a devolved issue. Um, fracking is a, de is a devolved issue. The SNP have kicked it into consultation um, for a very long time. Um, and the reason why they've done that is because they're trying to keep the Greens on side in the Scottish Parliament. They've been trying to do that for a very long time. So it'll be interesting to find out what the SNP member on the panel thinks. In terms of fracking in general, I actually am a supporter of fracking on the basis, um, on the basis actually of, of the, the cost-effective benefit. I think when it's done effectively and done well with local communities. So I think it's important that we don't just let fracking companies just frack anywhere. I think it's important that it's done with local communities and that there's a benefit to local communities as well. Whether that's a uh, we've noticed in England and Wales there's actually been a model in which 10% of the earnings from fracking goes back to the local community. That's the sort of thing that I don't even think a local community would shoot down. Now, it is on a base-to-base a, a -base basis. It is on a case-to-case -case basis, and it does generally depend, but I'm a supporter as well on the basis that thanks to fracking in North America, we now have lower oil prices. So in terms of actually petrol and stuff like that, th there's, a, there's a benefit there. In terms of the north of Glasgow... I have to plead ignorance on the basis that I'm not actually, I haven't looked into that case. As I said, my constituency is in the south side, so I haven't actually looked. I think it's in the north of Deniston, it's sort of that area, from what I'm aware of, from what other councils have been saying. Yeah, from what I'm aware of, but I actually don't know the individual kind of points of that case, so I plead ignorance on that. Okay, well, as, uh, with the Labour Party, it's, no, the policy do not really uh, support fracking, and just to protect the community and the society itself. It's very clear. Well, well, the Liberal Democrat um, Party's policy on fracking is no. We, we don't agree with it. Um, yeah, just to say that it's a bit more complex um, than the Tories would have you believe, as, um, as most things are. Um, my understanding is that the UK government issues licences for fracking, but the, U but the Scottish government has powers around a uh, planning um, issues. So where the Scottish Government has control over that, we have used the planning laws to um, prevent fracking going ahead. We've called, we have a moratorium in Scotland on fracking. Um, we have also um, looked at the scientific evidence on this and are not convinced that it's a particularly good thing to do. And the issue from, from some of the, the sites in America where fracking has gone ahead, I'm not sure it has worked out particularly well. I think we've all seen you know, videos of the internet of people having um, you know, been able to set their tap water on fire. I'm not really sure that even if you got um, a 10% cut of the fracking profits that you really want your tap water going on fire. Um, so I think there's a lot to be worried about about fracking, and I certainly wouldn't support it going ahead um, in Glasgow and Scotland. So is that your party's opinion? So are you saying right now, ju just, just for clarity, just for clarity, you say, are you saying right now that your party does not support fracking? Because Nicola has failed to do it. She stood up in FMQs every time, and she's failed to do it. The Scottish government has put a moratorium on fracking. That means it can't go ahead. That is the right, most so, that we can so do. So you're just it. saying that that's right. it, your party's against it then? We have put a moratorium on fracking. Some of the issues around this are still reserved to Westminster, and we do not have full control over this, sadly. I wish that we did. So if you did have full control, you wouldn't be a supporter of fracking, and your party wouldn't be a supporter of fracking. Just to get that out there, because I feel that Nicola is negated right. <laughs> to mention yeah. that. Right. We've done all that we can to oh, prevent right. okay. yeah, no okay. the okay. that we have. Horton, um, you said earlier, I think it was you that said earlier that, um, and that is something that's completely under the SNP. Can I tell you, whilst we are part of the United Kingdom, nothing is completely under the SNP Nonsense. because we do not control the budgets. We get the money that we are it's given. Passing the buck. That is absolutely it's passing true. the buck. You're blaming no, someone no. else. Hang Take on. responsibility. Hang Take on. responsibility. Can I ask you to let Anne, she gave you time to answer. Can I ask you to and let under this Tory government between 2010 and 2020 our budget will have been cut in real terms oh, here we go. by well nonsense. well okay absolute nonsense. so the Tory candidate doesn't want to hear that our budget was cut by 2.9 billion pounds absolute nonsense but he doesn't mind absolute nonsense but he doesn't mind he doesn't mind because at a hustings the other night, he said, I don't have a problem with austerity. In fact, I quite like that it. That is not what I said. That's a misquote. That is what that you is a said. 
That is a misquote. There are people here. I'm a lying again, Ewan. It's a yeah, yeah. Your party does it all the blooming time. Have to ask you to stop and ask, let Anne answer the question tomorrow. If she, if she puts if she puts charges towards me, I have more than a right, right. to answer. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry, but not getting your serious. Charges right? to her, and she let you speak before she answered them. I, I support. I actually me. think. I'm going to ask you to all just take a moment. I'm going to ask. Paul now to address Maureen's question, <laughs> and then we'll move on to Daniel. If that's okay, Paul, okay. if you could just... Can I just say that I think it's up to the chair who speaks, not up to you, Ewan. So, <coughs> in, in terms of the educational maintenance allowance, as you will know, and, and, and okay, you cannot always compare England with Scotland, but while we're part of the United Kingdom, it's important to know that they scrapped it completely in England. Yes, they did. And we have kept it and expanded it in Scotland. The educational maintenance allowance exists, but our budgets are being cut year after year. Where do you expect us to get the additional no, money? The me, educational maintenance time, allowance allows people to go on to university and there they pay no tuition, whereas in England Sorry, they do pay here. tuition. We've now got tax raising powers. Now we've got tax raising powers. And the Labour Party fought to stop us getting those tax raising powers. I was trying to answer the question. No, I'm trying to address that, Daniel. I appreciate that, and I'm trying to address that. I'm actually trying to ask the candidates only to address the questions that are being asked and not to uh, attack each other. If you'd like to take a seat, I would really like you to continue with this. And I've, I have asked all candidates to just address the questions that have been asked. And I'm going to ask the audience, we're into the last half hour, if you want your questions, and I realise there's a lot of questions, just to let the candidates answer. You're not required to agree with them, but you're please required to at least listen to their answer and then come back to that answer if that's okay. And Thank you. <laughs> Hello, um, just to say a thing or two. Um, Glasgow is facing um, a potential man-made disaster that is um, fracking. I don't know how much you've heard about it. There's not been much on the television. And the five or so billionaires <coughs> that own 80% of the newspapers, uh, they stand to profit from it, so they won't be telling you about it in the national newspapers. Um, fracking involves drilling 4,000 feet into the ground and then pumping in radioactive and also other highly toxic chemicals. They're pumped in under pressure in water. It has been proven that fracking is unpredictable, dangerous and deadly, especially to small children, babies, unborn babies and future mothers. In Australia, we have seen fish and other wildlife die en masse. In America, we have seen toxic gases that can be lit with a match when they come through the water taps. You can't be a NIMBY on fracking. You can't undo the pollution due to the deadly toxins which will flood into the water supply. And the sort of people who want to frack us up don't care. They tend to live on 130 million pound yachts offshore to avoid paying tax. Yes, I'm getting on to my question. Sorry, I didn't realise you already knew about fracking. It's just in case you don't. Okay, now I know that the, the, the Conservatives' position in fracking is very clear. Mm -hmm. The Labour's position on fracking is very clear. Uh, I'm not sure what the Liberal Democrats is. And the um, SNP's is that they have a, an indefinite halt on it until they can figure out if fracking is safe or, or dangerous. And so my question... Could you, as individuals, um, or let me know and maybe let everyone else know what their position is? Daniel, to answer that first. Okay, so cutting to the chase, I understand the question to be what my personal view is and what my party view is. Uh, 
there's a lack of evidence base at the moment re 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 regarding the long-term consequences of fracking and for that reason the uh, Liberal Democrats have opposed fracking and my personal view is, is the same as mirrored that if you're going to do something that has proven consequences to both individuals, communities and the environment then you better look at the long-term effects before implementing it and that just hasn't really happened in this country yet. So we're opposed and I'm opposed. That's my answer. Um, well, t to be perfectly honest, my, my party actually does support it and I'm probably going to maybe even shock some people in the room and say that I don't support fracking. Um, I'm actually against my party's position on this as I actually on the basis of the research that's been done. I've had a look at the research and I've actually realised that it actually frankly isn't good enough. I've written to my own party leader on this. I've actually written to our environment spokesman um, on this because I don't believe that it's acceptable that this should happen. Me as an individual and as a councillor and because it <laughs> does affect my own city. I'm not happy with it. So that's me as, as an individual. In terms of my party, unfortunately, my party does support it. It's one of the policies that, frankly, we just disagree on. Um, I, on a personal level, oppose... On a personal level, I'm opposed to fracking. I would be pretty scared if anyone was to start fracking anywhere in this country. I don't think it's going to happen because um, you said that the government was trying to figure out if it was safe or not. They're not trying to figure it out. They're trying to get the evidence base because you have to have a robust evidence base to ban it. We're not independent. We can have our, th these things overturned by the House of Lords, for example. So there has to be a strong evidence base. I am 100% confident that all of the responses to the consult, not all of the, but most of the responses to the consultation will provide that strong evidence base for it to be banned. So I'm opposed to it and I'm looking forward to the SNP government banning it, but doing it with a robust evidence base. Thanks a lot for your question, sir. Um, uh, as you, you probably you mentioned, uh, the, the Labour Party's policy on this is pretty unequivocal. Uh, no ifs, no buts, there will be no fracking in the UK. But I think um, certainly, having looked at it myself, you know, I just so happened that a few of my friends from school ended up studying geology at university. <laughs> they all really like geography at school, so I suppose that's why. But like, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I've talked to them at length about the risks associated with it and what their opinions are of it. And, Having a, them having a technical understanding of it as well, they just think that the regulatory environment is, is too uncertain at this point in time to even consider it. And certainly can, looking at uh, this part of the, of the world in Glasgow North East, there's two fracking licenses uh, made, uh, made in Milton and uh, just behind my old school, Turnbull High School, and also up at Rob Royston. So I had a ch chance to go up to see the, the public meeting in Milton last week um, and I had an opportunity to submit my thoughts to the consultation that closed last week on fracking and I, I think the, the consensus absolutely, the unanimous consensus in the room was that uh, no, no way were we having this risk so close to houses. But I think the bigger concern is actually even though we're talking about banning fracking activity in the UK, we're still importing fracked gas and that's a bigger concern because it's, it's only one side of the equation that we're dealing with the production of it in the UK. It's actually the environmental effect of its, of its production globally <laughs> uh, and if we're still creating demand for it by bringing it in, in tankers to, to, to Grangemouth, um, we have to address the bigger picture of the Scottish energy situation this, and have a proper coherent policy to address energy production supply in this country. And I, sadly, we just don't see it. Uh, we're, you know, we've had a situation actually for the first time in the last, ever since the Industrial Revolution actually this year, we've stopped using coal for electricity production in this country. So it's a huge change that we're seeing happen in energy production. But already we're seeing a huge shift in, uh, you know, we're going to lose uh, nuclear production, which is carbon neutral in this country in the next few years. Uh, and we're, we're going to be moving into renewables. Uh, but how do we address that? There's no coherent policy. So that's got to be a big challenge for the, for the Scottish Government as well as the UK Government. Thank you. Um, another question. 